morning, zero pence here. And uh, in front of you is a glass with a bear in it. And uh, this is going to be my latest project. Um, I'd like to say that I hadn't done this before. It was first time, so if I muck it up, <laughs> I've got an excuse. But glass engraving is not my first time, so hopefully this should turn out quite well. Um, antler and bone and things like that, never done that before. Never never found a, uh, a need for it. But I've been doing this uh, knife making and things, and as I go on, I find them more things I have in my arsenal will come into the forefront um, engraving just being one of them and having this mate this is this is an incredible bit of kit honestly it's so powerful and it just you need the RPMs to actually use some of this engraving tools some of the some of the little ones the handheld ones and the little battery ones are not really up to it speed wise but you know, personal preference. The more experience, the more speed you will want, the more um, power you'll want. So I've got it now. No, I can't. I can't um, say more about this. Then it's just an awesome bit of kit. Anyway, let's get started. Um, I'm going to start with a. I've got the preliminary sketch in there it is one of my sketches it's quite an old one so um date on it down there although we can see how it's it's done by me yonks and yonks ago so i don't know whether i can still follow the lines or not but we'll see now here is the bear you can see it's engraved onto the you know, shading and everything else has got to be picked out and done. But that is the outline of the bear. Now I was thinking as I was doing this, right, if you you're thinking of having a go at this and you've got a Dremel or an engraver, do it. Do it. It's you know you'll find it really, really satisfying. It's a really you know, this is gonna be on there forever until this until some careless person drops it on the floor, it's going to be there. And, it, and knowing some of these bits of glass that are about from the 17s, 16s and 1700s, this could be about for a long, long time. So you want it to be good for a start. And, uh, you know, it's going to be yours. And um, if you are going to do it, there are three pieces of kit that you really need. And uh, one of them, in my case, when it comes to protecting your breathing and your chest and your lungs, I go all out. I don't stint on anything where that's concerned. And your ears. This is constantly buzzing. I don't know what it's, what it's at, but you know, I don't want to wake up one morning with zinging in my ears and find out it's there forever. So these are very important and well used as you can see. But that's just one of the things. And in here is not the sandwiches. I put it in a sandwich box. And the sandwich box isn't that great. It was one of you wife's and I just nicked it. But it's airtight. Give that a wipe out with a, a bit of paper towel. Put it back in here, a bit of sanitizer, it's fine, it will keep forever, it'll last forever. You know, change your, these are all interchangeable, so I can change them. It's a lot cheaper than buying a new mask. That's just that. So it's your ear defenders, your mask, because this is, especially with this stuff, because this is silica, you don't want it in the air. And the next thing, which is really important, you might, and it's just a simple thing, it's a damp cloth. Because if you get any of that dust over the place, before you take your mask off, quick wipe over with a damp cloth to make sure 
there and I rinse it out and make sure you're not breathing it in because you do not want to breathe this stuff in because it will do you in you take it from me oh no so you don't want to mess about with this stuff so be safe when you're doing this all right well, that's my little safety talk but they're the three most important things and one of them is a damp cloth and keep your mask clean and in a sandwich box don't leave it lying around the man cave because it will get dirty and you will be breathing it in because the dirt will get inside the mask and it won't do you any good so look after your equipment that's looking after you and that basically is it now back to the bear as you can see it's quite an impressive animal to bear isn't it it just is awesome it just says power but not bad to have on a drinking glass i don't think now that's the first little bit now these are glass engraving bits in there. And they're kind of different to the ordinary engraver because there's a couple of now if, you've, if you've had a Dremel kit you'll see that there's lots of these little things in there and people think they're for finishing off models and things like that these are shaders and shading stones and the round one is for getting that nice like subtle shading that you want on a piece like this that would you know in the in the hair and that where that's a bit rough well marked out but we, once you go over it with this and start blending it in it looks absolutely gorgeous and that is my next thing now I've got the little ball end and a slightly larger all in there and then I have there's more <laughs> a myriad of bits in there these are new ones that I've treated myself to um, they're not expensive this particular kit was £3.90 with postage free so, and you get a lot in there, but it's a matter of knowing what to do and how to use them, and that only comes with practice. There's loads of stuff on the YouTube that uh, you can look at, and really good stuff, you know. And people like me that. Well, there it is. There's the bear now. Again, it's just the shadow outlines and the deep markings I've been put in. And uh, there's some some other little bits that have got to be uh, picked up on. And once they're done, it's basically nearly finished. It's only taken once you once you start and you you use an outline. Basically, once you've got your picture. And it's just a matter of tracing really and then after you trace your outline which is, is quite you know if you get good control of uh, the thing now I'm going to show you again my engraver it's, that is actually thinner I haven't got one about at the moment but that's thinner than a white marker just like showing people what you can do with these things so that is the first bit. And the next bit is a little bit more relaxed because I can sit back in the chair, shine my light over the top of it. And because this is a big piece of kit, I don't have to use my magnifier. Right? And this magnifier, you don't want to know how much these cost. <laughs> a long, long time ago. And I've made a few changes to this because in here, as you can see, uh, probably the light won't see that that is a low voltage bulb and um, it's a lot 
brighter than the normal bulb that goes in there and there's no heat from it whereas before this used to get hot and uh, with the energy saving bulbs it doesn't get hot keeping up with technology this this will take it and it saves it saves saves you money as well so let's just go over a couple, couple of bits of kit and uh, the different types of stuff and I'm going to put on this now and start doing some shaving and you see how it picks up it's awesome anyway I'll be back in a moment I'm going to change the bit now from this. As you can see, the shading uh, that actually is like using a pencil to shade, and uh, it gives you a very light touch to it. So all your shading can be done. And then the next thing that I'm going to do after that. So I'm going to take this, change the bit over, so that I can put the hair in, individually put the hair in, and uh, you'll see, hopefully, how it comes out. Well there's, in case you can see the, the hair, turn it for you. But there's the detail that has to be put in. But the, um, when you're doing a bear, if you don't take the time to do the individual hairs and lap them in a certain way, he, he ain't gonna look like a bear. He's gonna well, he's gonna look like a cotton wool bud with a nose. So you have to take your time. And you have to lay the hairs all in the right way. It works as a form of shading because that's what makes the makeup of the bear if you look at the drawing if I can get you in there what makes the shape and it stand out is the actual lay of the hair and it's no, in actual fact it's more crucial doing this and I'm going to lay the hair down this side now and do a few adjustments because when you're doing glass um, what you've got to remember is that the glass is round and as you can see as you turn it if you turn it to a certain angle um, you get a completely different view like that unlike a flat drawing it starts to turn round so as you see, you see you have got to get the lay of those hairs right because if they're not uh, it looks Peculiar to say the least. So there you are. Back shortly. The camera seems to be working quite well today. So it's picking up all the all the different things, but you can see the there's a few more adjustments to be done, but this is the finished bear. And you can see the way that it, it turns and gives that 3D effect. Beautiful. Um, the way it's come out. Um, I sound big headed. <laughs> so, but <laughs> when you're pleased, you're pleased. And that is, that's come out quite well. Um, now, I'm going to show you what happens. You know that I said this um, at the beginning, you needed a damp cloth. Well, this is another reason for the damp rag, if you watch. Wow, it's disappeared. <laughs> Magic tricks as well. <laughs> there you go. Right. Now, I'll take a piece of 
position tower that I've got in the thing. Oh, I'll just lift that up one and take the excess off. Now what that's doing is cleaning all the dust that's left behind in the engraving off. And you have to do this a few times throughout the process while you're doing it. And then you have to wait. And as you'll see, it'll start coming back and you'll start seeing the detail again. It's quite, it's quite satisfying watching it come back. <laughs> uh, no stop go here. But you can see all the um, uh, hairs and the individual layers on it. I wanna I wanna adjust the nose slightly, just even up the roundness of it. Um and maybe lift the eyebrow slightly. I don't know yet. But um, here's the drawing, and it doesn't look far off. Of, uh, far off as that, so I'm quite happy. Um, just maybe a little bit more adjustment. I don't know. Yet. But uh, I'll play about with it. But, uh, the eyes are uh, quite nice as well. So. But, uh, as I say, maybe a little bit more messing around, but I don't know yet. Uh, but that is why you use the damp cloth. It comes up crisp again, and eyes. a couple of little adjustments I've got to do once I've done those. I'll be back. I haven't used the um, damp rag yet so that you can actually see by going close the adjustments that I made to the eye, to the nose and to the side of the cheek and the muzzle line. One eye looked different to the other, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you again. I'm going to wipe it down with the rag, dry it off. because you need that to be pressed up on the thing and there, there you are one bear engraved on a drinking glass and it doesn't show up very well like that at all but when you put the black back into it, that's when the detail pops. <laughs> so, drink Guinness and your pair will show up really, really well. <laughs> there you are. One bear. Hope you like it. I'm trying to get to show you the the hair and stuff and just uh and go around.
One bear. Zero pens. I hope you like it. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.